mi lo je Olorun wa gbagba Baba mi lo je Olorun wa gba o ye Emi ko le se ke mi ma yin Oluwa o Haleluya Emi ko le se Emi ko le se ke mi ma yin Oluwa o
Oshana Renga, Oshana Renga to you, O Lord. I will praise you, O Lord. I shout hallelujah. Oshana Renga to you, O Lord. Hallelujah. Oshana Renga, Oshana Renga, Oshana Renga to you, O Lord. I will praise the O Lord. I shout hallelujah. Oshana. And say, Jesus, I thank you. The fourth day on this mountain, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is my song. Because you have been so good to me. Because you have been so good to us. Because you have blessed us in many ways. Because our coming has not been in vain. You have blessed us. You have reached out to us. Thank you, Jesus. Can we declare that tonight, let the heavens be open. Lord, send a word to us tonight. Father, send the blessings again tonight. We are ready. Jesus, release your word, release your blessings. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you once again. Tonight of your fullness, we receive grace. We receive power. And we receive your blessings. For your servant you have prepared to use tonight. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will increase your grace, your power, and your anointing upon our life. In the name of Jesus. May we leave this place more blessed. 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For our brethren who are online watching and those who could not even make it, we ask eternal God that you will also bless them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can we put our hands together for Jesus tonight? Praise the Lord. You're welcome in Jesus' name, into God's presence. Today is the first day of waiting on the Lord, and we shall receive from him in Jesus' name. Our scripture reading today is from Luke 19, verse 13, our key verse. Luke 19, verse 13. Then we are also going to read from Matthew 25, 14 to 30. But I start from Luke 19, verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pants and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Matthew 25, verse from verse 14. Matthew 25, from verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he made, then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents, verse 17. And likewise, he that I received two, he also gained other two. But he that I received one, went and digged in the earth, and eat his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reconnect with them. And so, he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents, Behold, I have gained beside, beside them five talents more. Verse 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that I received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside him. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he, which had received the one talent, came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strode. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there, thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strode. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall he take in the way, even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into utter darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our heart in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm excited. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of my praise.
Hallelujah. Good evening, church. Thank you very much, choir. Thank you for that um, rendition. God today, yesterday, and all the time. The same God that has been bringing us across from Monday till now is still God, even right now. And I want to thank you, my pastor, my senior pastor, my associate pastor, and the entire um, diaconate. I thank you for this great opportunity. For me, it's an honor. I appreciate it. I will not trade it for anything. I am deeply touched, and I am so grateful to God. I'm so grateful to God. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate this. It's an experience that I do not take for granted, and I will remember all the days of my life. So I give all the glory to Jesus and bless his name. Um, let us pray, actually. Let's pray, please. Shall we pray? Our Father and our King, we thank you so much this evening. We want to thank you again for the way that you have been taking us all these days. Thank you, Lord, for the expositions that you are giving unto us for the past three days. Jehovah, today is the fourth day. And Lord, we have come again. We have come for something new, something extraordinary, something supernatural, something that you have not said to us before. Lord of lords and king of kings, as we open ourselves unto you tonight, we trust you to teach us. We pray that your word will have a free course in our lives tonight in the name of Jesus. We ask that nothing, nothing shall hinder the flow of your anointing, even in this place tonight, in the mind name and your name alone will be glorified. You alone will be seen on this pulpit, daddy, because it's all about you. We give you all praise and adoration for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So, the mandate of the kingdom. The book of Luke chapter 19, verse 13 had been read to us. That is our anchor passage. And um, tonight, I just want, I, I didn't even know what title to give to this, but I would just implore you to come with me. I would just be speaking my mind as the Lord has spoken to me, not um, in a particular order or a form of formality. I'm, I would just declare uh, the mind of the Holy Spirit as it had been shown to me. So I call this tonight, Handling the investment of God. Handling the investment of God. And that is the mandate that we have. It's all about how we handle the investment that God has made in our lives. Our mandate is to go and enlarge the kingdom of God on earth. In the parable that we have been studying over and over and over again, Luke chapter 19, verse 13, I will not go back to it. So that um, I know that we are kind of into it, it's inside us, and that is one of the reasons why I'm so grateful to God, because I have never understood even this parable like this before. But in the past few days, I have gotten more understanding, more exposition, and I feel filled even right now. So in this parable, we have come to understand the intolerance that Jesus asked for laziness and lazy people. And I'm going to be coming from that end tonight. We have all known what our mandate means, is uh, the, the authority that, go, that God has given to us. That is our calling, our assignment. The, the, the minors that God has given represents you know, the ministry that God has given to each and every one of us. And we have listened to uh, people of God, as we have been encouraged on this pulpit, you know, how to handle this mandate, how to cherish it, like I'm going to begin to do from now on. I, I, I want us to cherish that mandate. I want us to understand that it, it is not, God has a prerogative, you know, you, you understand what I mean? That's why the Bible says, he will have mercy, on him we will have mercy. That is a prerogative. It's a choice. And the fact that we are Christians, 
just puts us in a better, I would call it a vintage position, whereby we can receive this kind of mandate. But it, if it pleases the Lord, he can give it to anybody. So that's why we cannot play with this mandate. We are privileged, you know, to be people of the kingdom and to have the mandate to, to work for the Lord. In the parable, we have come to understand the intolerance that Jesus Christ has for laziness and lazy people. That is what I have understood over the few days. The Bible told us of a master that the master that would before embarking on a long journey, he entrusted his money into the hands of his servants. He expected them to increase what he has given to them. However, when this master returned, he found that only two servants have increased what was given to them. And the Bible said that the master returned that the first and the second servant have doubled their investment. I know that in the account of Luke, it talks about 10 talents, 5 talents, and 1 talent. In the account of Matthew, it talks about um, um, 5, 2, and 1. But it's all about this assignment that had been given to us and to this, it's just a, it's, 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 it says the kingdom of God should be likened to this. It's just helping us to understand what the kingdom is all about and the expectation of God uh, for us concerning the kingdom. So when the master saw the increase, you know, of the first um, servant that came to give a report, he was excited. The second one too came. He was thrilled. So he commended them and saying, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou art been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And I asked myself, Why did the master call their success a few things? Because for me, the accomplishment wasn't small. It was huge, yet he said that, and I'm sure the servants must have wondered too, why did he call this small? What they did was fantastic, but to the master, it was just the beginning. It was just the beginning. They have proved themselves to be hardworking and capable, and this is the way God deals with us. Those things that God had called on us to do, the offices that God has asked you to hold, the assignments that God has given to you, it's just the beginning. So let's not just sit down there and think, okay, we have got it. We are there now. We are the head. We are the one that controls things. God looks at these things as just the, our humble beginnings. And that is, that is why he said to these people, you have been faithful in little things. Because as far as I'm concerned, those things were not little. Because they have de demonstrated responsibility. And the master knows that they can now be trusted with true riches. So look into the areas. Look into your mandate where the Lord had called you. Have you been demonstrating this responsibility? Can the master now trust you with greater things? Because that is what is going to come on after this. They passed the test on a lower level. That's the way I see it. And the master was satisfied to thrust upward to even more monumental life assignments. When he came to the third servant, however, he saw that the third servant had done nothing with the money given to him. That's verse 22b of um, Luke chapter 9. So he told the servant, and they went into a dialogue. The man was trying to explain himself that this is the reason. He gave all the reasons on earth to defend uh, his um, inability or whatever you want to call it, his laziness. Let me put it that way. To defend what he had done. And it, 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 the master now said to the servant, now you, thou knowest, because the master, the servant himself knows. He said, I know you. He said, I know that you are an austere person. I know that you like to reap where you did not sow. 
Okay, if you know that this master will demand of you, will demand of me, of the abilities and the talents that we have, he has given to us. So why would do, we would sit down and just relax and do nothing? Because our God, from what I can see here, is a good businessman. You know, he sold and he was expecting returns. So, it's obvious that the third servant was not ignorant of the master's expectation. He knew the master expected increase. All the servants, they understood the deal. So the third one could not claim ignorance. You and I, we cannot claim ignorance. We know that the master has an expectation of us. He knew that the master expected him to do something significant with what was entrusted to him. The master would not accept, that's another thing I saw, he would not accept any excuse for lack of increase. He would not accept any excuse. It didn't matter how difficult the situation was, how many odds were against the servant, or how impossible it seemed, the master still expected an increase. The servant knew. So he found himself in a horrible predicament. He was condemned by his own mouth for saying that, okay, because I know you are this, I know you are that, so I went to help you to hide the money. It's not even a reasonable thing to do. No wonder the master said, and like I said, this is a, a, a businessman. He said, look, even if since you knew that I wouldn't play with my investments, I don't just sow for, for sowing sake. I put things in the lives of people with the expectation of an increase and expectation of a return. So if you knew, why did you not keep the money for me, at least in the bank, so that when I come back, even if it, not, it did not yield as much as those of the other servants, I would still have gotten some gain. You know, God doesn't have room for things like this. So the master called him wicked. Can you imagine? And every time I think, I think about that, may God not call me wicked. May God not call you wicked. He called him wicked, unprofitable. Those are strong words. So, you know, meaning somebody that is idle, somebody that is lazy, lethargic, lackadaisical, indifferent, lukewarm. Lukewarm attitude towards life, generally. And God cannot stand people like this. This is a strong word. These are strong words chosen by the Holy Spirit to tell us how Jesus feels about those who are lethargic, about their spiritual lives and assignments. Jesus has no taste for lackadaisical people who are lukewarm about their God-given ability or who are indifferent about their assignments, leaving a sickening taste in the Lord's mouth. Remember, he warned us. He said, I wish that you would either be cold or hot. I can't stand lukewarm people. He will spill them out of his mouth. That is what he said in the word of God. So he has a distaste for something like that. And these are things that we need to take home that will help us to understand the importance of what God is trying to teach us this week. This month, something that we can keep with us forever. God loves us as individuals. He loves me. He loves you. But he strongly dislikes the lazy attitude that keeps people from reaching their maximum potential. Because that is his expectation for you and I. Do you need to address your work ethics in the house of God? If so, make a decision today. Jesus expects the best from you and me. If he were to come and evaluate you and evaluate me, will he find us effective and satisfactory, like the first two servants, or defective and lacking? God forbid. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. I want us to take note of uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, which says, whatever we do, whether in word or deed, we do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, 
giving thanks to God the Father through him. Every time I think about the attitude of this third servant, and that is what makes me uncomfortable. You know, I can, from that passage, I can say also that this man is being referred to as an ungrateful person. A waster of resources. Is that you? Are you a waster of resources? Am I a waster of the resources that God had given to me? Am I ungrateful? Am I unjust? Because the Lord even saw him as unjust. Because you know what somebody wants. And you purposely denied him of what, he, he, I mean, he, he deserves. He has played his own part. He has given you what you needed. And then, you just can't be bothered. When he comes, I mean, he can do whatever he likes. That is exactly what such people are saying. People like that, they are erroneous. They have the wrong fear. Do you have the wrong fear? The only fear that any Christian should have is a reverential fear for God. The Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. It's not a fear of not doing what God has asked you to do. No. It's to live reverentially. Think of God in everything that you do. And, you know, be careful and just keep yourself. He was rebuked. This man, he was judged for failure of trust. Again, remember, he was stripped of his talents. He was cut off. He was banished forever. May this not be your portion. May, be not be, may this not be my portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May I not be banished from the kingdom of God. May we, may the, man, the mandate that God has given to you and I, <laughs> may he not be taken away from us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's ponder on these things. I also want to uh, refer us to the, the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. And if they can help us to project it, I wouldn't mind. Because I will... And it's, uh, no, 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 no. I said Romans 12, 11. Okay. Look at it. See what the Lord is telling us. Do not be slothful in business. Be fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. Please continue to 12. Rejoicing in hope. Be patient in tribulations. But adventure, you have problems like this man. You have all sorts of excuses. God says be patient. Continuing instant in prayers. It's just about to continue seeking the face of God. God did not take all these excuses. God did not take all these excuses from this man. Rather, he received condemnation instead of recommendation that the other two people had. Hebrews, 2, 6, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12 also wants us not to be sluggish, but to imitate those who through faith and patience they inherit the promise. There was a promise for these servants, but for those who took their time for those who were diligent, it wasn't, it, maybe they too had uh, problems, but because they were diligent, they were patient, they inherited the promise. So instead of commendation, the unprofitable servant received condemnation. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 30, the Bible says, Cast him, cast ye the unprofitable servant into utter darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And this is something, again, that I, I, I don't know. My person is funny. I think about it, Lord, weeping, gnashing of teeth. What is the meaning of this? Ah, Lord, may this not happen. How do you gnash teeth? I mean, weeping is a little bit understandable. How do you, may we not gnash our teeth? Because I've heard the story before. They said this gnashing of teeth, I don't know whether it's true or not, oh, it comes from one big um, nation that when their um, nationals, when they commit an offense, I don't know what kind of justice is that. 
they have these high built walls and in the night they throw the offenders over the wall so that they will fall down to the bottom of the wall where they have dumped refuse and so many things. So lions come in the middle of the night to that place and they believe that, okay, if the lion to eat them up, then they are, uh, they are guilty. If they are not eating up, they, they, they are probably, I mean, they are not guilty. And I, and I said, you can now imagine that is proper gnashing of teeth because you are exposed to such a high risk that you cannot handle. And all that the person will be doing all night will be to be crying and truly gnashing their teeth. Just imagine that in your head. So, I wonder what it means. That's why I said, I, I just want to illustrate with this, but God forbid. The answer to my question, the question of my heart about things like this, is what has been found in this story about the master who gave the talents. Why calling the lazy servant wicked and slothful? He used the parable to teach us what he expects of us. So, from that Romans 12, 11, please don't forget, don't lag behind in diligence. Let's continue to be fervent in spirit. Nobody lays their hand on the plow and look back. God said he will not have a part in them, anyone that does that. The parable vividly illustrates Jesus' sentiments towards lazy people who have potential gifts and talent, but they are too lazy to get up, to get out of the house and do something to develop the potentials that have been entrusted to them. We need to pay careful attention to this message of this parable because how Jesus sees it is how we must see it also. Jesus said, take the talents from him and give it unto the person with ten talents. Ah, this will be the response of any employer who discovered a time waster on his staff team. Rather than waste time waiting for an unprofitable, non-productive person, a smart employer will take the responsibility from him and give it to someone who can get the job done, isn't it? So, Jesus continued. He says, for unto everyone that hath shall be given more, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he has. That is in the book of Luke chapter 19 that we have been reading. If you go right down to the bottom of that passage. Those who are good performers and who the boss can trust to get things done will always have a plate full of responsibilities. The employer trusts the employee's ability and appreciates their willingness to do whatever is necessary to complete the assignment with excellence. Therefore, he keeps piling more on this person whom he knows he can trust. So it's not a matter of being envious of one another. This, the God that we serve is a God of the heart. He sees, he knows all things. This is precisely what Jesus Christ said. He said, for unto everyone that who has shall be given. But Jesus also said that from him who hath not shall be taken even that which he has. That's a good way to make sure that poor jobs are not rewarded. Reward is only for those who deserve them. Any person who consistently fails but consistently fails to do his job correctly and on time, or consistently does the assignment or task with grumpy, complaining attitude, should not be surprised that bigger tasks or assignments are delegated to someone beside him. This leads me again to the account of the same parable. It says, cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. That explains Jesus' intolerance again for non-productivity. Imagine that. Some people have great ideas. Let me illustrate with you. Some people, all of us, we have great ideas in life. But we keep pondering over those ideas for too long without us acting on them. Someone now comes up with the same idea, went out and did something about it. The original owner of the idea sees another prospering with this, that same idea. How would he feel? He knows he could have been the one that is prospering experiencing that prosperity or success, but now it's too late. His hesitation to act or his laziness prevented him from getting up, putting the idea into action. As a result, the opportunity passed to someone else who is willing to do something with the idea. Do you know anyone who has experienced such agony? 
due to lack of faith to step out and act on his dream? Or do you fit into this description? I pray that I have not just described anyone in this church. The last thing that Jesus wants is for us to experience weeping and gnashing of teeth. But honestly, it is up to us. If you do nothing with the ability and opportunities that God has given you, you can be certain that the privileged opportunities will pass to someone who is willing to do something with them. The agony here is to see someone else standing in your dream. I am begging you. Please don't make a mistake. God has given us gifts, callings, dreams to fulfill. Now it's up to you to step out in faith and do something with the minors that you have. Questions. If Jesus were to come and inspect your attitude to work and your actual work performance, what kind of evaluation do you think he would give you and I? I mean, it's for you to answer. It's for me to answer. If Jesus were to come now and evaluate us, what kind of report will he give about you? Will he give about me? And if you were looking for someone to promote, would you want to promote someone who has an attitude like mine, like yours, or work like we do? If the answer is yes, if the answer is yes, if you know that Jesus will want somebody like you and I, then thank God for that. But if the answer is no, why would you want to promote anyone like that? No, not possible. In conclusion, a person, that becomes, a person becomes pointless when he contributes nothing to the kingdom. Don't let that describe your life. God didn't bring you to life or into the kingdom to live a pointless or inconsequential life. He has purpose for you in the kingdom. He wants to use you. He wants to use me. He wants us to be a significant part of his plan. Get up. Jump in the race. That is my admonition tonight. God wants us. He's calling us to be a part of his team. Um, that is the message for tonight as God has laid upon my heart. Thank you very much. I pray that we shall all be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. I just want us to rise up now and make some declarations, if you don't mind. I want us to say, I am not an accident. Please say after me. I am not a mistake. God knew me before the earth was created. He called me before I was formed in my mother's womb. And has long waited my arrival on planet earth. God has plans for me. I am purposeful and respectful of myself. And I walk in the way that honors the one who, are, who called me and anointed me to be enlisted in his service. <laughs> Say after me, please, again. I am a good worker. And I have great attitude. I'm exactly the kind of person God can use and bless. I'm exactly the kind of worker that God is thrilled to have in the kingdom team. I work hard to do such work that I bring many blessings and benefits to those who are over me in authority. God rewards me for being fruitful. My striving towards excellence today will lead to my promotion and increase tomorrow. Again, I am not lazy or afraid to step out in faith. I am filled with God's wonderful ideas. And I will do what he has put in my heart. 
fulfilling my mandate. I am not hesitant. I am not fearful, but rather bold, courageous, and ready to go. God is my helper. Therefore, I will not be afraid, for the Lord is with me. He directs my mind. He guides my steps. And his words light the path before me. I declare all this by faith in Jesus' name. Let us pray. And I want you to take any position that you like. If you like, if you want to come to the altar, you can come to the altar. Wherever you want to stand, stand. And I want us to start asking God to help us. Lord, help me to start looking at my life. To see the worth in me. God sees us as great people. People that are dependable. People that are reliable. That is why he has given us these talents. That's why he has given us these great ideas. That is why he has placed us highly in high positions of authority, of responsibility. That's why he has placed us there. He called, you called me and have an awesome plan for my life. Let us pray that God will uncover the plan so that we can get started on the road in the name of Jesus. Lord, uncover your plans for me so that I can get started on the road of obedience towards the fulfillment of what you brought me into the kingdom to do. If it's a bit long, just ask God that God Start, put me on the road of obedience. Uncover your plans for me, O oh Lord. Please uncover your plans for me. Let me know. Let me see. Open my eyes to see, Lord. Uncover your plans so that I can get started. So that I can hit the ground run. I can get on the road of obedience towards the fulfillment of what you brought me into your kingdom to do. O oh Lord, open my eyes to see. Uncover these plans, oh God. Let me know the reason why you saved my life. The reason why you brought me into the kingdom. The reason why you called me your own. So that I can get started. On the road of obedience towards the fulfillment of what you have brought me into the kingdom to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's also pray. Lord, let's ask for mercy. I am sorry for my laziness. If you have been lazy, you have not done it completely like me. It's like you have been working to earn the salary, but not to get promotion. You know there's a difference between the two. So Lord, forgive my laziness that I have allowed in my life. Forgive me that laziness, that complacency, that lethargicness. God, those things that I have allowed in my life, I have not applied myself, my heart and strength. I have, I, I have just taken it anyhow, and you have been merciful to me. I have not done enough job to deserve a promotion or salary increase. Lord, forgive me for complaining. Forgive my laziness. Forgive my complaining. Forgive my complacency. Forgive me, Lord, my lackadaisicalness. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me. I sincerely ask you, Lord, tonight to help me change my attitude to increase my level of performance. Lord, change my attitude to increase my level of performance in your kingdom. Lord, change this attitude, this lukewarm attitude in me. This laziness, Lord, take it away from me so that my performance can be improved in your kingdom. So that my performance can be increased, oh God, in your kingdom. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray again. Lord, help me to understand. Let us pray. To, uh, God will help us to understand how to act on the ideas that God has placed in our hearts. You know, many, many times, God gives us ideas. God, that's why some people, they hold on to their, I don't want to tell the story of some people that used to come to my friend's house and they wanted to marry my friend's sister, but they kept quiet. They did not express their ideas until somebody came, a friend of theirs, and took that lady away, and they were, and, and they were angry. Was that not an idea stolen? Ah, God forbid. Now, let us pray. Lord, help me to understand how to act on the ideas that you have placed in my heart. 
Help me to understand. Holy Spirit, I don't want to be like the unprofitable servant. Oh, never. I will never be casted in, in the outer darkness. I will never have to gnash my teeth. I belong to the kingdom. I will not be an outsider in the kingdom. I don't want to be like an unprofitable servant who was thrown out. I want to live the reality of my mandate. Tell the Lord, I want to live the reality of my mandate. I want to live the reality of my assignment. I want to live the reality of my calling. Please give me wisdom. Give me courage, oh God, to step out and begin to fulfill the dream that you have birthed in my soul. God has birthed many dreams in us. Let us pray tonight. Lord, give me that grace. Give me that courage. Give me the wisdom to begin to bear, to begin to live according to those dreams that you have already birthed in me. So that they will not remain dreams forever. They will become reality. In the name of Jesus. They will become tangible. They will become something that can, the world can see. Something that God can pray. Something that God can reward. They will become things that I can lay my hands upon. Things that are worthy of reference. This age and time. Things that are worthy of reference in the kingdom. I need the Holy Spirit. To stir up courage inside me. And help me to get moving. I need to get moving. It's not a matter of staying on the same spot. These servants, they were promoted. They were given bigger kingdoms. Lord, I want to move higher. I want to go higher. I don't want to remain on the same spot. Marking time. There is more to what I'm doing right now. I need to progress. Lord, I cancel every retrogression in my life. Every lethargicness I cancel. Every laziness I come out of them. Lord, I receive that grace. The grace to stir up courage and help me to get moving. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let us also pray to put all distractions out of our way. Out of our way. And put our sight so that we will be focused on fulfilling our mandate. Say, Lord, remove all distractions out of my way. I don't want to be mentioning those distractions now. But we know. You know what distracts you. I know what distracts me. Lord, put all distractions out of my way. And help me to focus on fulfilling the assignment that you have designed for me. I know it will take a great concentration. But Lord, by your grace, I can do it. By the grace of God, I can do it. By the mercies of God, I can do it. Lord, I disallow anything that will pull me away from reaching your goal for my life. I withdraw and I disallow from anything that can distract me from reaching your goal for my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Finally, oh God, fill me with supernatural endurance. Because challenges will come, definitely. But if God gives you that supernatural endurance, that grace to overcome, Lord, give me, fill me with that supernatural endurance to carry the assignment, to carry out the assignment that you have given to me. Give me the supernatural endurance to overcome all obstacles, all odds, all excuses, because <laughs> the master will not listen to them all. Lord, give me that supernatural endurance to carry out the assignment that you have given to me. Lord, continue to strengthen me until I bring this assignment to a victorious end. In the name of Jesus. Lord, continue to strengthen me. Continue to strengthen me, oh God. In every area that I'm weak, I receive strength tonight. The strength to bring this assignment to a victorious end and glorious end. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Amen. Finally, I want us to pray for our church. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. For years, I believe this 
church has been fulfilling God's mandate. So we're still going to pray. Even for this generation, we will not lose focus. This church will never, never lose focus. Can we just pray in the mighty name of Jesus? The last prayer we are praying. Even generations that will come after us, there will never be a time in the history of this church that we will miss it. Even after we have left the stage and Jesus has not come, the mandate of God over this church will never, never be compromised. We are just asking that God will never allow his mandate over this church to be compromised at any point. At any point. At any point. Generations that will come after us, they will not miss the mandate of God for this church. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for the entrance of your word that has given us understanding. Thank you also for the bearer of your word. Thank you, Lord Almighty, for pungent words that we have received tonight. We are praying as the Holy Spirit continues to enlarge these words in our heart. Father, we shall put our talents to work in the name of Jesus. As we have cried again unto you tonight, none of us will lose our mandate. None of us will be called wicked and slothful in the mighty name of Jesus. We have also prayed for our church, Orita Mepha Baptist Church. Father, this church will never lose a mandate in the name of Jesus. For your servant that you have used, we ask, we pray for her also. Daddy, that she also, she will never lose her mandate in the name of Jesus. Tomorrow is the last day of waiting. As we come together like this, we are praying the Lord, tomorrow also shall be greater. For those who could not join us, those who joined us online, or those who are going to watch later, we ask, oh Lord, that the same power, the same grace will rest upon them in the name of Jesus. As we go home now, we go home fulfilled. We go home satisfied. We go home encouraged. We go home enriched in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. We release a word concerning the revival starting on Sunday. Almighty Father, we ask that, Lord, our heavens shall be opened. For your servant that will be leading our thoughts, no bringing the word of God to us, Father, anoint him in the name of Jesus. Lord, as from Sunday, Father, let there be salvation. Let there be deliverance. Let there be commitment. Let the house of Orita Mepha Baptist Church, let us enter, Lord, into our inheritance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory and honor be unto you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Can we share the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you so much. The Lord will continue to encourage every one of us.